Park Springs on Tuesday, January 8, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Alahuzas? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carl? Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by Major Morris from the Salvation Army to please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. evening with open hearts and open hands for what you would have for us this evening. We thank you for the mayor, the city manager, and the members of the board of commissions, and the members of law enforcement here, upon whom the example of leadership has been placed by the people of Hartland Springs. We pray that the discussion tonight will be pleasing to you, and that the uh, conversation will be as you would have it to be. Thank you for the leaders of our community, and we pray that you will bless them and guide them as they serve you through their ministry and through their work in this community. For it's in your holy and your precious name we pray. Amen.
six, restoration of trees. Enforcement. What can be done to enforce the planting of new trees within the approved list of trees to the properties that were issued issue a permit by the arborist? In questions of time and joy, to mitigate the cost to the owners and of the property damage by the life of trees planted by the developer and other job suits of the and strengths. Two, the curious case of 754 Lighthouse versus 801 Westways. The damaged apron of the drivers of both properties. A, both has shown evidence of being damaged by the roots of a life oak tree by the decisions of the arborists, but the decisions of the arborists are not equal. B, the life oak at 801 is healthy, but yet again it was planted to. Mayor Lahuzis? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by Major Morris from the Salvation Army to please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. To stop the prayer. Our Father, we come to you this evening with open hearts and open hands for what you would have for us this evening. We thank you for the mayor and the city manager and the members of the board of commissions and the members of law enforcement here, upon whom the national leadership has been placed by the people of Tarpon Springs. We pray that the discussion tonight will be pleasing to you and that the uh, conversation will be as you would have it to be. Thank you for the leaders of our community. We pray that you will bless them and guide them as they serve you through their ministry and through their work in this community. For it's in your holy and your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
for an anchor's weight, not, not with them, so I heard it urban. However, many years ago, on the southern side of Compass Inlet, many lack of trees disappeared on 802, 806, and 810. And owners still live next to the information besides on Compass Inlet at, Compass, Compass Inlet at 806. Five, Western Boulevard at the corner property of 802 Compass Circles has also had a tree that's been missing for many years. Check Google Maps. Six, Western Boulevard, the pine tree was destroyed by urban passing, causing damage to a structure at 901 Western Boulevard. More damage was caused to the property in the back area by the all the same property, also by a pine tree. Seven, main soda rap, none were felt by Hurricane Irma. Eight, Captain's Way, one was allegedly damaged by Hurricane Irma. A permit was issued to that corner property with the second trade Nine, trade winds, none were damaged. Six, restoration of trees enforcement. What can be done to enforce the planting of new trees within the approved list of trees to the properties that were is issued a permit by the arborists? In Western Southern Georgia, to mitigate the cost to the owners and of the property damaged by the life of trees planted by the developer and other job suits of Southern Springs. Two, the curious case of 754 Lighthouse versus 801 Westways. The damaged apron of the drivers of both properties. A, both has shown evidence of being damaged by the roots of a life oak tree by the decisions of the arborists, but the decisions of the arborists are not equal. B, the life oak at 801 is healthy, but yet again it was planted too close to a driveway with the roots damaging the apron. The arborists issued a permit to remove the live oak tree that is not damaged to the street nor the sidewalk as was the one at 754. See, the tree on lighthouse was clean, causing damage to the gutter of the street and the apron of the driveway. Code enforcement ordered to be taken down because of the obvious damage to the street property. B. The restoration of the area by about 754 lighthouse was done in stages by the city of Stephen Springs, first striking down the sidewalk, leaving a mountain that couldn't be handled by an elderly neighbor of World War II veteran who needed the assistance of an electric car to be mobile within the community. I saw him almost fall twice trying to retreat his nail as he negotiated the damage paper. Fortunately, he left off the streets for the lesson and I promised him that it would an American flag until he returned. He didn't. He broke his sick in the fall in Michigan. He, Irma's car, after three more sections. Very sure. Good. Okay. Irma's car, the best he looked at the next company, and I finally gave up on his return when he sold his properties. This is where my new neighbor comes in. The damage was caused by a tree that was cold and forced to cause some damage to the sidewalk, by the street, apron of the driveway. Why did the city of Tarkin Street repair the apron of 1754 Lighthouse Street? The city is saying that it will repair the one's driveway if the owner cuts down the healthy life of tree. Gee, this would be a first case of gender age discrimination. My neighbor is a retired elderly woman, and the one on the other one is a strong middle aged farmer. And this was the vanish. You see?
and we ask the seat of Congress may urge all people to join and pay tribute to the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and apply his life and teachings of service to inspire others to, uh, to serve and remember his spirit of our community. Now, therefore, I pray some of us by virtue of the authority that's need me. In the name of the seat of Congress, thanks for the to give I proclaim January 21st, 2019, is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And today we are very glad to have uh, four members from uh, from the organization. I know that we have my friend, Pinellas County School Board, Aileen Long. Thank you for being here today. Of course, Reverend Smith and also Carmel Lake. And thank you for being here today. Can you all come up here to accept the proclamation?
this stuff. So I think it just comes down to the importance of communicating to the county commissioners too that we're yeah. still here. Yes. And uh, reminding them about how much uh, we have did Eggers has been great and we've had some other county commissioners that really have done a lot for Carbon, but just to remind them that we're up here in North Dallas and we still pay yeah. taxes. And we you know we wanted to show you that we're getting the fight over you know, one vote, we're gonna fight to get a portion of that money that's available yeah. to our three cities we're gonna be fighting for it, you know, or one of how many votes but We'll be fighting for it, so thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments at this time? You're up. The chair will retain a motion to motion. Everyone calls us. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Mayor Lahuzas? Yes. We are now going to the item of the 7th of June 2018 that story. Police special plan amendments. This is the second reading. This is Ordinance 2018 30 Ordinance of the City of Tartan Springs, Florida, Amendment Chapter 2, Administration Article 3, Pensions and Retirement Division 1. Generally, Paragraph 2 35, Additional Benefits for Police Officers of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tartan Springs, Amending Section A, Definitions by Amending the Definitions of act Actuarial Equivalent, Credited Services, Effective Date, and Spouse. Amending Section C, Board of Trustees, Amending Section D, Finances and Fund Management, Amending Section O, Maximum Pension, Amending Section BB, Deferred Retirement Option Plan, Adding Section CC, Supplemental Benefit Component for Special Benefits, Chapter 185 Share Plan, Providing for Codification, Providing for Severability Provisions, Providing All Ordinances in Conflict Herewith, and Providing for an Effective Date. That was the second final reading of Ordinance 2018 30. This was advertised in Tampa Bay Times on December 21, 2018. It requires public hearing. Thank you. So we're going to ask that before. And if yeah. there's, there's no other changes, again, all these are statutory things. There's changes in the state statute that we have to change in there. Uh, all of the agreements, um, and nothing's changed in that agreement from the first reading. So, same thing. Yeah. Any public comments? Are there any public comments? Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzas? Yes. Item number eight, we have a conversation to proceed with the Nyes Statute Project, installation of Commissioner Sieber, and second work. First of all, sir, I just want to you know, apologize. Diane Wood uh, came back from her trip very sick and is is at home and will not be here tonight. Um, basically, um, can we see for that? So if you want to just what agenda, what I had done with you to do, and I hope that you have been here to go over this with you, is just for your consideration, um, present these methods. If, if we want to get the NIADs up, there are some pretty, this is probably the fastest way. She came up with my view, some of the fastest ways um, we can get it up. And mainly, it, Mainly what she is saying in her memo looking at it is to hire an installer to do it. Look at what type of surface is best and just to put a surface down, whether it be a surface blue that looks like the water or another surface. She gave some examples in here that she was going to talk about with his other ideas, but probably the fastest way to get these installed if you have one impression she and us, I'm sure public art got after last meeting to get these up that we proceed with getting the installers to, to place the statue where they're going to be, probably put whatever the ground is going to be, and then at a later time, if we want to add it, we want to do something else, we can do it. But this is the suggestion for the fastest method if you want to see the NIADs in the roundabout, and we're offering that up, up to you. And uh, again, we're going to ask to put this on the agenda and talk about uh, the different ideas of what you want to do with this project. Thanks. Yes. Uh, thanks, Mark, for putting this on the agenda. Um, I, wanted, I think most of you know the don't really know the history of the roundabout and how this all came about, and that's why I was a little uh, confused at the last VOC meeting that we had with the Public Art Committee, and I went to their meeting today, and we had a really good discussion, and I think we're along the same lines now. Um, I did not know that they were asked to do a, a water feature, a booking feature in a water uh, uh, 
but for the base to be not natural, as it's found again, and it flowed out a good anchor past her book, I thought it would be taking away from the art, especially since these are river naiads. They're not ocean. They're not blue waters. They're kind of a natural river setting. So I really liked the way it looked in this book. I thought, why should we spend money to create art when we are trying to show the art here? I thank Diane Wood for her additions that she gave to us. But I want to remind everyone that this is a circle. So we don't want to just have a cooking board. We need it to be inclusive of the circle. So the two naiads standing towards each other, I think, look great in different places, sitting in different places. But I feel like after five years of waiting for this project, it's time we moved on with it. And I would really like tonight to decide which way we want to go so that we can let the art community know which way to proceed. There are several local places where we can get rocks and pebbles. Wendy's or Irene, who's now bringing her rocks from Columbus, and I talked to her about that. And we could have something beautifully made without having to go out and pay for art. I wonder if Public Works could help us with it so that we could get this moving, because I really would like it installed by C. And I think it can be done if we just make a decision tonight to move forward and let the community know. Yeah. You know, after reading all the Baker information, it seems like the whole Ford Installation Company qualifies to do that. Sure. I mean, they all did that before. It seems like to me... You don't want it to take another year. No, no. I understand. I agree with you. So if we can actually select one of the four companies, even though they all seem like they will qualify for the Baker, looking at different options, I'll prefer option four. And I think that's what you were talking about, using the extra stones. Yes. And the way that they're placed and the options that they have are not necessarily the way they need to be placed in the circle, because they're kind of looking forward like you're looking at a museum piece. Yeah. They need to be seen throughout the whole circle and encompass the circle. Yeah. And those natural stones that Irene has, which was... Yes. She has many of those that we can use, and they're not that expensive. Well, even in Greece, if you remember David, across our hotel in Missouri, there was a bronze something. I can't remember who she was. She was just on a rock. And you see a lot of types of art like that, bronze art, just on rocks in a very natural setting, so they don't go through expensive mosaics and other types of art. But that's not what we're featuring. We're featuring the Nyads. And in talking today with the Art Committee, and I invite anybody who wants to come up and speak tonight, I felt like we were on different pages, and I think it would be advantageous for us to do special sessions with them so we can direct them in what we're wanting, and they don't go looking for something else. And then we're shocked, or I was shocked anyway, and they were shocked when I rejected the project. So I just think going forward we need to have some special sessions to discuss what their ideas are and what we want in the city. Commissioner Carr is going to be speaking with us. And I like the water feature. Yes. Oh, good. Thanks, Ryan. There. So let me just ask this question. Yeah, and I do apologize. Our last meeting was a little squirrely, I think. I think that we all need to get on the same page. And I feel that if we had maybe had a work session maybe once a quarter with the Art Committee, so we know we're all together, and we can direct you as to what we want to see within the community. I think that might help. And I'm willing to take on another work session. I think that's what we need, honestly. But I have a question. So if 
we decide on one of these companies that are listed, we'd have to go out to bid. Uh, you're not, yeah, you're not, you're not going to decide on the company. What you have to give myself and the art committee, because whatever it is you're talking about something that has to be designed. We have to design something. You, as a group, has to tell me what's the design. Not th those are just exact. Those are just to give you some visuals. You need. Is it going to be a rock? I mean, you need to tell us because I know you're talking about hurrying and going, but we're talking about designs. Um, I don't want to get into the sensitive subject of the water feature and stuff, but water feature was discussed several years ago and with the art committee, and they were told the problems with trying to bring water. To, if you want running water, when we talked about water feature, the color of blue and something down there. They're, oh, we're talking about running water. Well, they, they, now you're talking about a lot more time because now we're going to design something to bring. There is no water. You're going to have to tear up the street. Um, you have, you know, no capability of lines. Hey, Mark, we have water there because that's how the plants are watered, and I've spoken to the people that work down there. It would not be that difficult to add a sp spout coming out with a pump of water. Uh, I, I'd like to make a decision tonight to let them know how to move forward if we like what's in the book with the rocks and the and the pebbles or so are you talking about option number three with the pebbles or option number four with the stone I think option four is more like what uh, Glenna's uh, book shows um, where they're sitting on rocks and we have pedestals <laughs> for them uh, to stand on and we can are they on a concrete base now what option is that the concrete has to be removed in order to prepare them According to what the I mean, the actual statue itself. Are they on a Are they on a base right now, or it could be? <coughs> see what I'm saying? I'm not sure. I got several more there. Same one could be okay. Okay. I mean, because by the picture, it looks like they're on the base, yeah, on their like standing on a base. So basically, that base would be placed with the statue. Okay. Correct. I'm not an artist, so I don't. <laughs> In response, three of the statues are on bases, okay. and one of them is not, the one that would be placed on a large boulder. I see that, okay. Right. So they're on those, they're on the bases on the boulder now, or do they have, and then we just bolt them? But no. that base has to be bold, it has to be built into the platform, the round platform some way um, so there still would be the installation of each of them, okay. to be honest. Okay. And how they're installed, you know, they're, they can be installed the way it's shown <laughs> in the book, where the two are facing each other and the other two are sitting in different directions so you can see them from around the circle. Right. Because uh, we don't want it to look like backs of everything on the other side of the circle. Yeah, and it seems right. like for the statues to be uh, installed, the, uh, the whatever it is right now, the circle that is now has to be removed. <laughs> that way, when they pour new concrete, the bolts that have to be placed okay. where the statue can be secured on there. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I, I contractors that know how to do yeah, that. That's, that's their, their part. You know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was just kind of curious how that would work. Because I, I mean, I, this is so much more natural looking, and I think that this is such a better option. Um, so I don't know, you know, what, you know, what the next steps would be, how quick we could move this along. But uh, I think first we have to agree on what we want, um, if we want the stone number, you know, what option number we want, and then go from there and um, give you a direction. But when it comes to the water feature, would we, ha would we have to um, factor that in now because they would have to do concrete and stone and stuff? Yeah, and you know, the water that they're showing in the book is just a, a stream coming up, and it's uh, water that's recycled right. with, with a, a pump. And Joan had mentioned that there are even um, solar pumps you could put in. So it's just water that's recycled and then just falling down. I, I, think, I honestly think that they should have some sort of a water feature, not paint, but actual water, because this is what they're representing. Um, would there be lighting on it as well? Mm -hmm. we'll is that what those lighting. round yeah. things are there? Those are lights, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, what we have to keep in mind is if we have water coming into it, the pump has to be placed someplace right. for the water to be pumped. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Let, the con let the contractor decide. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I, though I support option four whenever else my colleagues want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fast one. Commissioner Carr. I've got an opinion. Um, thank you for. Uh, the art committee, I, I know you all, um, like I've talked to Ms. Orr last night, um, 
the last meeting didn't go as planned, I think. And uh, but thank you for your service and your volunteer your volunteering and uh, your commitment to Tarpon Springs and wanting to see Tarpon Springs become a, a more beautiful place. Um, I don't like option one because of the pavers. I'm just not a big fan of the pavers. Um, option five I like, but it prevents people from getting into the middle of the naiads. Um, so it it's kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. So I would say no to option one and no to option five. Uh, I do like stamped concrete. It's a kind of unique process because um, you're, you're creating a solid surface. It's a more economical way of getting a, um, a color and a design. Uh, and it's also can be a, a flat surface um, and it's, it's an easier way to do that. So I'm not against option two at all. I like option two, um, option four and option three. I'm sorry, not option three. Option three with the with the small pebbles in the concrete, um, those tend to get more, uh, I guess they're more slick when they get wet. Uh, so that would just caution uh, the board when looking at option three, um, unless you're looking at using those types of small stones in a water feature like off to the side or like the background of one of the, um, one of the statues. So um, I guess from a design element, if we're talking about a water feature, which sounds like two commissioners have discussed, um, there's really not a need to have water there all the time. It's like a, a little pond, right? With the, you'd have a little water feature and it would bubble up some water. So someone would have to come by and just put water in it every once a week or something along those lines from the water truck is what I'm assuming. Um, yeah, it's just shooting up. So it's like a it's a pond, like you, you see out in front of the library, similar to that, right? Except um, it's not a fountain, um, and it's not a feature you would be walking through. You'd probably stand in front of it to take pictures or look at it, just like a museum piece or something. But I wouldn't, you know. All right, well, these are two. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Are we good having a discussion? If we just, <laughs> are we okay with that? Man? You so that way, but you'd like that the least bit does that. Um, the what's what's in the backup is two different things. So, right. if you're looking at a water feature, you're basically eliminating the ability to walk around and like interact with the the statues, right? Um, there's two different options. You could have a water feature where it's in the middle and the statues are a part of it, or you could have a water feature kind of in the background of one or two of them where it's um, just bubbling and you've got some water, and then you could also interact with the statues as well. So those are two different ways you could have the water feature. Um, embedded into the artwork, I suppose. Uh, this, and I know you can't see up uh, on the live stream, but um, that's going to be a little more um, involved, or a lot more involved than a smaller water feature like on the outskirts of the roundabout. So I'm not against the water feature. I love water features. So I'm in support of a water feature if that's the, the route we want to go. But what's been presented here tonight, I, I like the stamp concrete and I like number four um, the best. And then somehow adding a water feature, I'm, I'm completely for that as well. Can I answer? Sure. Um, I think that the reason Diane came up with these different uh, types are because uh, she was directed not to have a water feature in it. So she was making it look like this without the water. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry she's not here tonight because I think that's where the confusion came in is we had one idea and, and you know there were other ideas going around. That's why I think we need to communicate better and, and, and more often. Um, but anyway, I just, we're surrounded by water in Tarpon. We're on the river. These are river and I am. I feel like we need some kind of water. So I, I definitely uh, would approve the water on there. But I just would like to make a decision tonight so we can move forward. Okay. I don't want to for the sake of argument, but there has not been a water feature talked about in this thing, I don't think, since 2016. So I don't know where that communication, there hasn't been one. Now, not to say we can reopen it and you want us to get water into something that's not, but it was always to get, it's going to be in a prime picture spot of people going, taking pictures. So the fountain, all those ideas were early. And I don't know of a time, maybe the art committee can tell me something different, but it's been many years since the talk of an actual flowing water thing was even, and you see in the what they brought back to you with the things to the side that you didn't side on one, they didn't have a water feature. And so 
I don't mind looking at something now. It's going to, it may complicate and take more time with, but hopefully we can get the other things put in and have space for it if the, if the water feature has to come later on. Um, I just want to say ahead. something in all yeah, respect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we started with a, the sponge diver carrying the mermaid with the water feature. Um, I guess, you know, I was always on that idea, and I think that the art committee mm. was directed to, to create something without a water feature, so they went the other route. Um, but if three of us up here or four of us up here like the water feature, I think we should make a decision tonight and, uh, and, and then move forward and, and work with them on, on how they're going to create it, and, and let's, get, let's get it going. I'd like to hear from the uh, Public Art Committee. Ms. Ford, would you please give us your recommendation and your ideas? Well, <clears throat> we do agree that a natural setting is very appropriate. Uh, these are the naiads and the fresh water. Um, the one in the book, it shows one water coming up and of course it can come back down and be recycled. And even though you can't plant plants in the concrete, I think uh, Diane Wood showed uh, pots that you could put small trees or flowers so you could have some natural features such as that. No, we, we are in favor of the ideas that were presented with the natural uh, environment, with uh, focus on the naiads and their design and their features and not distracting from that. You want to say something? Yeah, I, I this is Diane, Diane Gage, who's a member of the committee who actually helped us to obtain the naiads. I, I just wanted to say, can you hear me? Yes. I didn't know. Okay. Um, I'm can getting I ask you to Can I ask you to state your name and your address for the record, please? Oh, Diana Gage? Yes. Oh, 333 Bay Street. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'm getting a little confused now because I hear you all talking about option one, two, three, four, five, and none of those are the option that's presented originally in the book. The book, the option that Sieber had open, was where we started and what we wanted, the way it was presented by the artist. So from there, we've gone to, because we were directed to not have water featured, that all the other designs came about. And I feel like now we're back home to what the artist actually portrays. And that's in the book. And it isn't that complicated, so. I don't know if we should call that option six, option seven, option one, option zero, but we need a name for that option because I'm getting confused about which ones we're talking about anymore. Okay. Well, there's a, a package that it came to us and it has all the different pictures. It went to the art board today. It did not come from us. It didn't, no. it didn't come from the art board. No, but you got. You we know, did you receive got it. Properly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And we did. And, uh, but I think we are in support of your ideas. We're in support of some natural features in pots. We're in favor of some type of foundation. And if we can have a water feature, it doesn't have to be huge, but the uh, two of the naiads are actually reaching up towards the water. And it would be nice if they had water, <laughs> you know, as in that picture. So, um, yes, we're 100% in support of that, and we will help in any way that we can to make this happen immediately. Thank you, Ms. Orr. Any other uh, member? Yes, please. <coughs> Again, Hector Cadena, 758 Lighthouse. I'm in favor of option five because it's the most natural. The water feature, I would suggest it just, just be rain. Having a pump, a, a a uh, basin to hold water when the pump breaks down, then you're going to have rotten water, mosquitoes spreading Zika, malaria, whatever, whatever it can be. So, and then also if you have a water feature, people will tend to climb rocks, they're slippery, they're going to fall, you're going to get sued. So number five is the most natural one. No water feature except for the rain. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, comments from the 
from the advisory board. No? Thank you. Commissioner Could Tai, I just you have, Commissioner Tai you have Oh, ready. sorry. Did you have yeah, yeah, I just, um, I'm happy to see artwork going in Tarpon Springs, but uh, if we could just maybe find a compromise of looking at two different designs. I don't know if we want to talk about this further. Um, you could do like a half circle with some natural stones and a water feature. Um, and then the other half circle would be like the stamped concrete or some natural stone that's laid in with grout of some sort that matches, that kind of flows in to where people can sit out and take a picture. All the naiads don't have to be in the water themselves. They could be close, like one could be sitting outside the water feature to where people could get closer to it and take a picture so they don't have to get, they won't go into the water. Um, I do, uh, you can attest to this. Um, people want to get in the water. I think someone jumped in the one of the Epiphany boats after Epiphany um, this Sunday to, as a, a person of the town. I'm not sure who she was, but, um, but people are going to, get in the water feature, you, you, that's going to happen. Yes, there's going to be nuisances, but at the same time, it, it, there is a beauty aspect of it, and I think the water feature would have a beauty aspect to this. So maybe if we do half the circle with the water feature and the other half is like a, a stamp stone or some type of stone where people could sit and gaze at the artwork or whatever they want to do, um, that might be a, a good compromise. Um, but if it's not cost-effective, then we could come back and revisit it. Is that something? Um, you know, there are benches all around um, that circle where people just sit right now and look at a blue circle. So to me, uh, having the whole piece of art uh, in, in the middle would, like the book shows, uh, I, I think is great. I know if you've gone overseas or other countries, there's lots of fountains, uh, and, and they're famous for their fountains in many countries. And we're surrounded by water here, so I, I feel that we need you know, even though, like you had said, mentioned that water coming up between the two naiads or the reaching up. Um, but I just, again, say let's just decide which way to move forward so we can move forward. Thank you. Any other comments? No, we're just making it too difficult at this point. I'm just, um, you know, I mean. Because they can be placed any way they want to be placed once we decide we want rocks and give pebbles. Give some sort of direction yes. on what yes. we want. Yeah. One at a time. Right. Thank you. So can I make a motion? You had a comment before. Well, I'm just thinking we're making this just too difficult, and we just need to give them some sort of direction. And it sounds like you, you want know, to make a motion. Can I make a motion yeah. that we um, move forward with option number four that is in our book, which is the naiads with natural stone and concrete base, and um, with some sort of a water option. Sorry. Any any other comments? That's option option four. four here. Commissioner Sieber suggested earlier to use some of those uh, natural stones that are being imported from Kalimnik, and if you can use those. Uh, I would love that, but how long would that take to get coming? They're here. They're here. They are here? Because I had uh, talked about the over the weekend, and I, and. They're here. Oh, I'll amend my motion. If we can use the stone from Kalimnik, I think that They're would right be a here. great idea. Yeah. Definitely. They're available. Definitely. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I spoke to Irene, and, you know, they already have that. Here, so they'd be happy to that work with great. the art committee. Mm -hmm. They come with different colors too, so mm -hmm. you find a color that'll be more suitable for them. Any uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Kikta. Yes. Commissioner Sieber. Yes. Vice Mayor Bantha. Yes. Mayor Lahuzas. Yes. Thank you. And I want to thank the committee, all of you, for your hard work and your dedication. And sorry that you had to go through all that. Thank you. And now we'll go to uh, item number nine, which is the uh, public art project for 2019, Commissioner Carr. This has been an artful night, for sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I know the I made a suggestion to the city manager that we should have a uh, a workshop with the art committee, and then I believe the mayor also sent out a memorandum um, talking about some beautification projects also that we need a workshop with that as well. But I, I felt that it was important to bring up some items um, 
I know our last workshop, some of these items were on the list. It was just late in the night, and we really didn't want to didn't really have time and ran out of time to t discuss some of these, but um, as the art committee is working on projects that are ultimately tax dollars from developers, uh, and it's our responsibility to make sure that we're directing the art committee in appropriate ways for what we feel is best as a board of commissioners, and I think it's going to be beneficial to the art committee as well to have clearer direction on what the board would like to see them do. Um, so. First, I want to apologize to the art committee that I feel like I may have not have been as clear in the past, um, but I hope to change that moving forward and looking forward to working with you all. Again, I'm passionate about seeing more art in Tarpon Springs, and I know you all are also. I uh, want to bring up just a handful of projects, and um, just I don't know if it would be a discussion amongst other commissioners or how this would go, but just want to bring up a few of them to discuss, and then we've got about $300,000 in the art fund currently today. Um, Mark, one thing I forgot to ask earlier for clarification, the gateway signs, how are those going to be funded? Is that going to be funded part of the art fund, or is that going to be funded from elsewhere? Do you remember? Again, it depends what the what the structure is, if it's, okay. an, if it's one that qualifies with art, because it's a true art, if it's just a, <clears throat> a sign. It's, it's kind of the difference of how artful you, you make okay. it, if it's an actual art project or that now some of the ideas like you had and stuff has a lot of art incorporated so i can see the, the okay. connection there but that's mainly because we've talked about different types and some are art and some are just a sign so that's where the distinction comes with but okay well i just want to i want to bring up some ideas and i talked to miss or about them last night as well um the one thing that i think it's really important is really uh is to have a a true sponge docs entrance sign to the sponge docs um and I think it'd be I think it'd be done really tastefully if you look at uh, I could just talk about it for a second. Um, you have a brick base, which is kind of the historic character, and you've got a black powder coated um, metal that goes up, and then it goes across the road that says "Welcome to the Historic Sponge Docks." And up both posts, you could incorporate um, the tarpon, the grouper, which is part of the historic um, deep sea fishing um, of, um, businesses. You can incorporate a sponger and a sponge suit. You can incorporate the lighthouse. You can incorporate sponges. You can incorporate <coughs> one of the sponge boats or the shrimp boat. You can incorporate a crab trap and also um, a channel marker. And that would, I think, do a lot. It would first tell people that you've come to the sponge docks because I think not everybody understands where the sponge dock starts and where it's at. And then secondly, you also bring in a lot of the character of the working docks not just the spongers, but also the businesses that thrive off of the crabbing and then the fishing industry and so on. And you can do that with potentially the bronze statues. I'm not really sure what they may be. Um, but I did a couple sketches, and I think that would be a, what I would say a priority number one uh, on my list to, to see um, a true artful piece when you come into the sponge docks. Um, I've got a list of stuff. I'm not sure how you want me to go about this, yeah. Mayor. Well, Commissioner Carter, I really appreciate all your great ideas, but uh, as we mentioned earlier, I think it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, I think it's going to be more suitable to have a workshop where I can actually can get all that information where everybody can see the the examples and the drawings that you're talking about. And and I agree that uh, art is very important because it beautifies the city, also improves the quality of life for the people. I think it's great to do that. And also, we've got to give a, a, you know, we have to give a, provide a direction to the city manager as well as we are providing to the, to the committee to come up with uh, what we're looking for. And I think it's a great idea to do that. Uh, do you have those uh, sketch that you're talking about? Is, is it something that you already pictures or um, that you can share with us? That well, again, Mayor, what I, what I kind of envisioned with this, like you had said and stuff, what the decision has to make is what type of of meeting you would have, but there's several types. I've heard, we've heard consensus from the other item and stuff that is probably, because obviously you could have a, your own work session, you could have a special, but I think what's ta been talked about um, from several of you and stuff is a joint meeting, whatever it is, whether it's a joint special session, uh, I guess you can have, Tom, a joint work session between two boards, yeah, um, however you want to do it. So, so the decision to make to do all these things, and plus, you know, again, 
talk about the rest of them is the joint decision to have a joint meeting with the art committee and, and the commission in a probably a workshop setting because really this is one of those ones too where you need to talk to the committee like a workshop not you know to do that so the envisionment you just have to decide what type of meeting you would want to do it is and i've kind of heard a consensus about a work session combined meeting with the art committee and the board of commissioners i think that that's what i will recommend we need to make sure to do it before commission or vice mayor banther leaves the board too i think it's important yeah. Yeah. It's good. That, that's what i'd like to discuss Call to order. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, right that's what I want to. That's what I want to discuss. I think it's a good idea to do a joint work session. Um, I just have a couple more ideas. I just want to throw out, if I could, just to get them on the record, um, and maybe something to think about while we head towards that joint session. Is, is that okay? Sure, go ahead. Okay. But make sure that you provide us that information during the work session, so we all can all be part of it. Absolutely, would be honored to. Um, Again, statues that are parks that are unique to Tarpon. Uh, some other places you visit, you see um, artful designs on a city bench. So you may see a statue sitting on a bench. It might be a pelican. It might be a sponger of some sort where you could sit down on the city bench and take a picture with it. And then you're, you're posting it on um, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, another thing I think that's unique to Tarpon is we've got a lot of old historic buildings that are no longer in Tarpon. Or we have a lot of old uh, historic buildings that have changed somewhat. And it would be neat to see uh, a lot of these old pictures uh, enlarged and put up in public spaces, if it's public green spaces or if it's a partnership with a, a building in downtown where we can hang it on the side of the, the building or if it's the salon, uh, the old salon at the top of the bayou where we enlarge an old picture of the Tarpon Inn and the bayou and hang it there so people can see what Tarpon used to look like and compare it to see what it looks like today. Um, uh, history art walk where we can incorporate um, the history of sponging and we could kind of have a trail throughout uh, maybe down the, um, the bike trail out to the North Stafford Park. Uh, the train station we could look at some statues where if it could be a, um, a mother and child trying to catch the train or you have a conductor. Uh, Sunset Beach has a lot of great opportunities where you could do a, um, something similar to a replica of the Anklo uh, Lighthouse. Uh, and have a history plaque there about the Anquote Lighthouse, how the importance of it is, um, how old it is, why it's there, um, how it was restored um, maybe about 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, and again, statues, more statues around the bayous uh, and green spaces, not just maybe in the parks. And then look at murals as well throughout the town. And then if there's selfie murals where you could use, for instance, like angel wings on the wall, and you can take a picture and then post it on social media we could get creative in Tarpon Springs if it's an octopus, it's a, if it's a sponger, if it's a, a shark trying to attack a person. Um, there's a lot of different things that we could help and get the students involved from St. Pete College and maybe offer a small scholarship if they're selected on their design as well. Uh, the golf course also has an opportunity to use some artwork in the front of the golf course to help spruce it up a little bit too. So those are just some of the ideas that I had written down and I'm happy to discuss these further in our workshop. and. Uh, looking forward to it. Okay, since we're talking about statue, and I'd like to everyone to know that uh, we received a notification that the statue of uh, Poseidon that will be donated to the city will be arriving to Tarpon Springs on March 15th. That's Poseidon. That's Poseidon. Poseidon is coming, it will be arriving March 15th. That's the body. There'll be a whole other discussion on the base and what we do with that. <laughs> so we're a long way from Poseidon because all it is is him going to be here. We, then we have to go through this of uh, making decisions on the base and all the dynamics of the base. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so yes, I thought we were, under, we were all under the impression tonight, at least I was, that these items are going to be discussed. Hopefully we can agree to have a work session with the public art committee so we can direct them on you know, what we're looking for um, for the city. And we're on the same, all on the same page. Hopefully it'll make your job easier. Um, we've talked about for at least five or more years, we have talked about the entrance sign to the sponge docks. I've brought many ideas here. It's gone nowhere. So, um, Maybe we can get something done, Jacob. I don't know, our commissioner. Uh, I had I brought pictures of uh, wrought iron. I went to like different places in Florida. Yeah. Um, and welcome to Tarpon Springs Sponge Capital of the World or something, some kind of a wrought iron thing at the, at the entrance. 
So we've discussed this many years. So, you know, and, and Rhea can, can attest to it because with the NIADS, how many years have we discussed? We're five years. So anyway, as you can tell, I'm frustrated because these are things, the golf course, we discussed what a few meetings ago at a work so session that we're gonna be putting a new sign there. I don't know how, uh, where we are with the new sign. Um, we've talked about the um, Sunset Beach putting some murals. You know that, Jacob, we've sat here and talked. So hopefully, I'm hoping we can get some of this done 2019, if not 2020. Um, but we need to, we, to give the art committee direction. Um, and if we have to meet once every quarter uh, with a special session, I'm willing to do that. Again, we just, uh, we need to move forward with, with putting art in our community. It's so important. People come from all over to see a certain artist. And um, I know with the, the mermaid down at the bayou, um, people research that. And, and, and there's, there was so much criteria that went into that mermaid, and it's just such an asset to this community. But, um, you know, they can only be within so many miles of one another. I mean, there's just, there's so many other, there were so many things that, that went into it that, the, that were required. So, it, so some of this stuff may not be as easy as we might think, I don't know, but um, um, I think we need to really just start moving on getting, uh, concentrating on uh, art in the community. You know, we've talked about for years putting art along the trail, still haven't seen any of that done. So. I think it's time for us as a board to um, help the art committee. Like I said, we, we have to do a special session once every quarter. Let's do it and, and, and get these projects moving along. And I appreciate everything you all do. And I know t in the beginning when this art committee was formed, how hard you had it, you know, and getting all the rules and bylaws and everything else done. And, and it's hard working with, they work with in the sunshine, correct? Or do they? Yes. Yeah, I know we know how hard that is too. So hopefully we can help guide you and um, on some of these projects. Like I said, we've been talking about some of these that are on here for a long time. So I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Just one reminder, so I can remind everybody, the problem with the entranceway sign is we've always been waiting for somebody to take control of the Pappas property because to do the base, we need we need some of that property probably to do that with and the biggest stall the last three years to try to get moving with that is the inability of that building to be developed and us to work out any agreement we even tried to do a landscaping agreement to help with them and they're in such especially after miss low mr low died now it's even worse right. than trying to get something so what we'll also have to do is look for maybe some alternative we may need to move down we Put need to yeah. move it down a different place than we had planned so there are also options but one of the biggest reasons why the original ideas for the entrance signs have stalled is it was going to be done in conjunction with the redevelopment of the pappas property and so we just need to maybe change the placement of it and stuff and look where we've got actual city land to be able to do it and not rely on because who knows how long that's going to be so that was one thing we'll start looking at right away um, the abilities to, to do that as we go along before the process so we have some of that information for you to go in. And you don't know how big the base could be for the sign. It shouldn't be super large. It but just depends on the structure, the weight, you know, for wind load and all that stuff. It's all those calculations. Bob Robertson's good at all those calculations and stuff. So we'll have him we'll have him looking at that so we kind of know. Vice Mayor Fair. Thank you. Well, I, I, will, I will leave the court knowing that public art is a good thing. <laughs> I've never heard so much discussion about that in like six years. Um, you know, one thing I would I, I would encourage. I know people don't want to. We don't want to just sit here for three months. I'm not trying to be lazy myself, but you know, I do think you know I, I I do agree with the city manager that you know well maybe get started. You know, there's you know this should be left to the next board. We don't know what that what, what that board's going to look like, obviously. Um, and then and second off, you know, well. And if theory say I was staying on the board, it, I would have no issue with joint sessions. But to do it quarterly or often, I mean, then why have the advisory board? You know, I mean, they definitely need direction. I think all advisory boards need 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 direction. Otherwise, we get what 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 uh, we have right now. So maybe start off with a joint session so they can pick your like you know pick your brain every year. What's your priority project for the year? What kind of taste do you all have? 
but then let them do their job and then bring it back in an organized manner um, and then go from there. So I just think maybe with a little more direction, the, the, all these conversations would be a, a lot, a lot, a lot more fruitful. If I was going to stay on the one, the one on the board, I, 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 I would not want to do an, an advisory board's job for them, which is why I have the board. So that's something to consider. But um, I, I, regardless of what happens, that is y'all's decision, and I'm excited to know that I think um, some much needed needed projects are going to start to happen. That frustration has been felt all, all across this board. I'm sure on the, with the public art committee as well, and with staff stuff stuff that has got installed. So now, so now, so now, so now, so now, you know, start, those, 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 those will start to happen. But just be smart about how you do it, and, and don't make it more of a job than, than you know what it is. Okay. Thank you. And, and I am uh, looking forward to uh, to have a, a joint workstation, a workshop, where we can actually providing the uh, the direction that we need to provide, but also so we all can be on the same page. And it seems like we have a little disconnect up to this point, so we need to solve that issue. And and I agree with uh, Vice Mayor Fenter that having a joint meeting once a month really is not going to be very productive. I think you are, uh, the, you know, the committee members are the, uh, uh, the people with the talent in, 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 in the art. Uh, you guys better qualified than I am in, when it comes to uh, in regards to art. So I think it's best to for the for that to come from you and uh, with your recommendations and providing several options and we all work together to come up with a with a grant. Thank you. Yes, uh, I I, I want to stop the frustration for both of us. So that's why. You know, when we spoke today, we talked about having a, a joint session so we can discuss and, and give you some direction. And it, as the mayor said, we're all on the same page uh, because we don't want to go back and forth for five years for every project. <laughs> um, but uh, I look forward to scheduling our first session. Um, I forgot what I was going to say after all this time. <laughs> uh, I agree with my uh, fellow commissioners. I would like to have some kind of feedback when you start working on this project uh, with the NIAIDs of where you're going and, and how it's looking. Uh, also about the entryway, you know, for the sponge docks. I know we've been discussing it for many years. Uh, what Ed Hoffman proposed uh, was a very nice design. Could we bring that in to talk about it when we have our, our uh, special session so we can see all different types of ideas? Because I loved, I loved Ed Hoffman's uh, Structure that never happens. <laughs> so, thank you, Commissioner Call. Thanks, Mayor, um, and thank you for the the discussion. Uh, I, I, yes, I support the joint session. I wasn't Thanks. recommending a joint session meeting quarterly. I was just more making a recommendation we should get updates at a board of commission meeting. Uh, just maybe someone coming in from the committee saying this is where we're at, and then if we need to give some direction at that point, we could give direction from the board. But I don't want to be in that many joint session meetings <laughs> with the art committee because that's what the art committee is here for to do. So um, okay. thank you for all your comments tonight. Okay. Mr. LeCurious, would you please schedule a joint meeting? Thank you. Is there any consensus on when to have that? Uh, it should be after election is my thought. I would say before the election, I think. It should be a whole new board up here. I mean, I don't, I don't wish to be one, but I'll, 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 with most things now, I will seal to the board. But the thought is, it, we want to give them direction for 2019, right? And then, if the new, if a, if there's a new board and you're here, currently on the board, we're all here on the board currently. It's only going to be another month. It's going to be one month. Well, the, the reason that you know, I know that they want some direction so they can uh, do their funding uh, or their budget for 2019. So they were really asking for some help when we discussed it today to, so that they can come up with their yeah. budget for 2019 and what do they need to work on. So that was the reason that, you know, I would think maybe we should do it sooner. I think we should do it sooner too. I will, I will recommend that we have it early uh, February. I, I'll look at some different, I'll look at some different opportunities and stuff where I think, again, and with the permission of the board, I want to ask, um, 
hopefully dying as well in a couple of days. Um, um, I would ask maybe request the ARC that we have uh, maybe a special meeting instead to discuss what was said tonight about the NIADs and stuff. Um, so I'll have Diane communicate with the art committee, maybe have, because the first, you know, these other things you're talking about in the workshop, the thing we have to take care of right now is the NIADs and stuff. So if we can get a schedule, we'll try to get a special meeting of the art committee to go over what was talked about tonight and bring that back to you. And I'll look at some availability, what dates um, were available um, to have a, to have a work session and stuff. And I'll bring that back to you next meeting. Y'all okay with that? Yes. Thank you. Works. Again, thank you all. Thank you. And now we're going to uh, item number 10 is appointment to the Board of Adjustment. We need to appoint an alternate member and we only have one applicant to choose from. So, I need a motion. Motion to appoint uh, Joanne Raich. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikra? Yes. Commissioner Seberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzas? Yes, thank you. The next item on the agenda is another appointment to the uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. And we need to appoint a regular member to the Parks and Recreation advisory board we need to select one person from uh, from the list and vice mayor panther i would naturally go with uh, a senior assistance academy member that's someone else has a strong opinion otherwise i would I, I would go with uh, richard morgan it looks like okay. Board of Citizens academy. all right alicia carr Victor? i'm sorry <laughs> 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 That's okay. Um, I was going to recommend Stephen Milford. Stephen, okay. Yeah, I, I see that some of these individuals have uh, priorities for other boards. Um, I think that uh, there will be a budget advisor committee position opening soon, and and um, and Al Parker uh, was asking for parks and recreation, so. I would recommend Al Parker. Al Parker. And Commissioner Carr. So we have three different people we've put forward right now. <laughs> uh, can someone remind me on how this would work then? Is it majority or we just, we're making. Select the one that you think will be the most qualified, in your opinion? I mean, I would, I would, right now, I would say, I mean, Stephen Milford, right now. I, mean, I, I would say, I would say. I'm sorry, which one do you like? Stephen Milford. Milford, okay. And uh, Vice Mayor Panther, you say you're going to change yours? Yes, yes, that's fine. Yes, he's. So you got, you got three there. Not on need abortion. Motion to approve, appoint Stephen Milford as a regular member of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Mayor Lahuzas? Yes, thank you. Well, that concludes the regular <laughs> session agenda tonight. And Major Young, yep. any comments? Yep. And thank you for yep. attending yep. tonight. City Attorney, Tom. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Mr. LaCour. Again, obviously, we had a great epiphany go off, and uh, all the city crews and and that worked on it, uh, you know, I want to thank them for all the hard work they did. Obviously, we definitely want to thank the police department and all the hard work they did on my first call of the New Year as city manager, the homicide and all the all the work that was done by them, working with other agencies, and uh, as you, you know, if you've seen the news today, that another body's been found. So, where where we had expected, where the girlfriend, and apparently it had been a long time ago when that happened, and this happened. So, never good to get your first call to the New Year City Manager and have a 
case where three people and three animals have been killed in a home and kids that are missing and everything else. But, you know, it's, it's the coordinated effort of law enforcement and our local sheriff's department, our, our tarpon department, FDLE, coordinating with other states that, uh, you know, we got it solved. And thank God they were able to get the kids up in Ohio to get him away from the kids when they took him down. Because obviously the worry was with the kids in the house that everybody would go out at the same time. So everybody did a great job in the hectic times of the new year with that case. And again, thank everybody um, involved and all the other agencies, the many, many agencies that were involved with us. Uh, Tarpon really appreciate having a quick end to that because, and again, the police department immediately went out to that neighborhood and had a session with all the people in the meadows to try to quell them. Obviously, it's real hard, as we know from a case in the past, it's real hard when you kind of know that they're not in danger, but how do you tell a community without revealing your investigative things, you need to catch somebody, that we kind of know who it is and going after them, but they did a great job immediately organizing the community together and trying to ease them, and I'm sure that kept a lot of your calls coming in about a neighborhood petrified with all the bodies found that the threat, and they did their best job saying we don't, the threat is gone and available and stuff, so thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Um, just two quick things. Um, the first is I want to remind everybody that on Tuesday, January 15th, is our first candidate forum for the upcoming election. It's going to be held from 6 to 8 here in the auditorium, and it will be given by the uh, League of Women Voters. Um, and then on Wednesday, January 16th, is our first uh, Citizens Academy class for this year. It's our Citizens Academy 7th class, um, and uh, that will be starting um, on January 16th and go through March 13th from 6 to 8 on every Wednesday. Thank you. And now we go into the board comments. Vice Mayor Panther. Yes, thank you. That, that's just amazing. We've had seven academies on the Michelle's very side of the town, right? <laughs> um, uh, I know we are, we are condensing that to one academy a year, starting next year, right? After after August, How, how's the one in August looking like a, like population wise? Um, we have probably about five or six members already out of the twenty. Nice, very nice. Yeah, I think it's wise to 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 to, to, to just do one a year. Um, I, I like to 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 kind of to kind of to to kind of piggyback off, off of what Mark said. Um, we are no small town police police uh, you know police agency. What our police had to do with the homicides, which always says we we have homicides in January. I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. the, the holidays or whatever. So, um, and then that, and then the epiphany, which is a, which is a huge execution. I'm very observant about like tactical things and security when I walk, and you, you look at the things, and I'm sure half of it we we, we don't even see. Okay, um, you know, I'll put our force up against St. Pete, Tampa, whatever else. We do what we might lack in in the in number in in intelligence and how we execute things and equipment. We're top of the line, so thank you and thank you to our to our to our to our to our chief. It, it, it went off very un, very uneventful, and uh, it was a great epiphany. It was great weather, and not 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 too crowded as well. So, thank you to all that and the church and everyone else that, that had a that, that had that had a that had a say in that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to comment on um, the homicides. I spoke to Chief this week, and, and I um, just wanted him to pass along to everybody. Thank you for all your hard work. He, uh, the, the department did an outstanding job, and um, we appreciate all you do for us. And yes, Epiphany went off great this year. We couldn't ask for better weather. I think being back out at Craig Park was um, absolutely perfect. It was just the right venue for it. Um, it was a great day. Uh, it didn't seem like the crowd was it didn't look like the crowd I was expecting it wasn't a weekend crowd. so um but it was absolutely fabulous everything was just great um thanks to everybody that was involved the church did a great job the city employees did a great job and and everybody that that takes us on every year um because I know it's it's a lot involved in um putting the, the event together so um thank you everybody that was involved and happy new year yes I also wanted to thank our police department for such efficiency and, and, and quickness with uh, getting this solved. Um, I, or getting, you know, this, this whole investigation started and, and pretty much solved. 
Uh, I also talked to Bob and you know, thank you for uh, on all the uh, police uh, agencies that, that work together. Uh, and as far as Epiphany goes, I think it was one of the best ones I've attended. Yeah. It was very well organized. It went very smoothly. Of course, the weather was beautiful. Uh, and I want to congratulate uh, Elias Candaliaris, <laughs> our, our uh, retriever of the cross. He's uh, Irene's nephew, I, I think you all know. Uh, not this Irene. <laughs> But um, yes, uh, congratulations to him and all the divers who dove because it's a year-long commitment to, uh, to do this and, 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 and hard work and, uh, like I said, commitment. So, and Happy New Year to everybody. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, it, it is great to see the history and all the unique events that we have in Tarpon Springs that aren't necessarily celebrated in other parts of the United States. And uh, I really did enjoy uh, to have the chance to to be a part of the Epiphany um, this year and being out in the city dock was a pretty neat experience as well. So uh, thank you to the Greek Church for the invite and uh, in involving the city commissioners and the mayor. Uh, and I really enjoyed the opportunity. Also just want to say thank you uh, to the, again, to the police department. I know there's a lot that goes on and, and all, the, all the staff members and the heads, the department heads of the city. Uh, I can't believe uh, this has been my first full year as a commissioner. Uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, I've got a lot of um, great information from a backup standpoint. Any questions I have, uh, I get the answers to, and uh, there's always willing to, to discuss further. So, uh, Mark, please um, let your staff know that we really do appreciate all their hard work this year, and thank you for their services uh, to the residents. We've got a lot of passionate people and residents that live in Tarpon Springs, um, all of us being one of them, but um, sometimes... Uh, I know I could be a bit of a nuisance to you uh, at times, but thank you for uh, for your work this year and uh, looking forward to 2000. <laughs> <laughs> My passion. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's politically correct. And, uh, so looking forward to 2019 and uh, serving with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I got several things that I'd like to uh, announce. Saturday, January 29. Uh, through Monday, January 21st, we have the Arts and Crafts Festival down at the Coin Club. So, Commission Sibley is going to be busy. I hope so. You hope so? <laughs> okay. And then, Saturday, January 29th, we have the uh, Martin Luther King uh, Junior Parade and also the uh, festivities at the uh, Dorset Park that begins at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we have new business that I'd like to welcome, Capenio Blackos on Ashton Street. Uh, also, like to express my thanks to His Eminence Archbishop Dimitrios, the Metropolitan Alexios of Elena, for another year of blessing in our city. And I want to thank our city department, Mr. Lecouris, if you please ex extend our thanks to the police department, fire department, public works, and all the city staff that were involved making this epiphany another special day for everybody. And thank you for uh, providing your leadership. Also, I'd like to uh, say my thanks to the uh, police and fire from uh, the surrounding cities that they came here to uh, assist us as they do every year. So if you please say thank you to them as well, I'll, I'll really appreciate it. And we are very proud to be called the Epiphany City here in Tarpon Springs. Um, we received a memo from uh, Ms. Larson in regards to uh, uh, sustainability, sea level rise, and the suggestion to have uh, to create a new advisory board, Mr. Licuris, I'm requesting that if you please place that, uh, place that on the agenda for a discussion, um, <clears throat> the first opportunity, I will appreciate that. And if you gather as much information as you can, that will have a productive discussion. Uh, also, uh, I'd like Mr. Licuris, I'd like to ask you uh, how we deal with the uh, surveillance cameras that we order. Are we getting close to get those? Well, first of all, Commissioner Banther has put that on the agenda okay, for the next so meeting, a discussion of the Environmental Committee, so that discussion is on for the next meeting. <laughs> um, they're, they're working right now. Um, the police department is, is working on that right now, and hopefully we'll have an update for you um, probably one of your February meetings. Okay, good. Well, that concludes the regular session okay. meeting. I just wanted to confirm that MLK Parade is on the 19th, not the 29th. 
You mentioned it was on the, the 29th. 19th? Yes, yeah. Yeah, did I, did I say 29th? Yes. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. It's January 29th. January 19th. 19th. <laughs> 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 okay, January 19th. <laughs> And we also have the uh, festivities at the uh, Dorset Park from 11 to 3 p.m. Well, that concludes the regular session meeting. It's adjourned at 8 or 5 p.m. <laughs>